The winds howled and hissed as they pushed the dust of the ground into every direction, as they pushed into the clear sky's empty void. It was the twelfth hour of the day, and the desert sands were once again empty. Not a single beast could be seen as tumbleweeds stumbled and danced drunkenly on their way to nowhere. Not even crickets could cry out in the vacuum of nothingness. The only thing close to a heartbreak came from the gray rocks, peeking their sharp, eroded heads out of the deep layers of sand. But then, out of the midst of the wind and sand and shadow, quaintly walking across the warm yellow snow's center, a beige bark scorpion, small as a thick knife and aged as wine, motioned and hovered in the vast ocean of grit, doing nothing except wandering, wandering, and wandering. Like a creeping hand, his six arachnid legs swished across the floor as his tail and claws dragged along the terrain and his six eyes squinted in resistance to the uncontrollable soil forcefully flung everywhere. At each calculated step on the ground, as each leg slit into the land's digs, the trail of sand the creature left behind him was covered, erased by the current of wind, first molding the grind, then grinding the mold in a cleansing ritual that cycled every few moments. But the scorpion didn't care. It had been days for him since he last sucked water from a small cactus. He ached, even starved for new food. He smelled the air for hours, but he was too late in realizing he had stretched too far out from his natural oasis of cacti and spiders and rats. His plan was to go back, for it, for it had seemed he lost all intrigue in the land's vast outskirts. It had been but nothing an abyss. Even if habitation was easy, he could never hope to find a dry morsel of flesh or drink let alone another meal or female scorpion. The only guarantee he had of the great yellow pit was its pull of predators like himself. He stopped in his tracks and motioned his claws and legs to turn back. He then scurried against the ground and blanketed his old tracks. It was only after a few steps were taken that he stopped and smelt flesh in his midst. He turned to his side and sniffed what was piled up by dust only a second ago, a giant piece of flesh buried in the grit of the storm. He rushed over to it as fast as his little legs could push him. His stinger and claws rose up as he neared the giant beast. In a short distance, he examined it, crawling around the body's perimeter. A dark-skinned giant covered in cloth, motionless on the ground, his eyes stayed closed as dark red stained his chest dry. Only his arm, torso, and head stuck out of the ground. The scorpion was sure of only two things. It wasn't a rat because it was too big, and it wasn't a rat because it was too great. He turned his back to see that no predator would fly or crawl near him. Then he turned back to the giant vertebrae. He opened his pincers wide, his growling stomach ready for a bite. Finally, after this, there would be thoughts to either move forward in the desert or to go back to the habitat or to simply form a new one in the beast's belly. But before he could press his teeth together and crush the dark skin in his mouth, something had grabbed him by the tail and yanked him high in the air. He wiggled his body and legs and gasped his mouth as though he could scream for help. He looked to see the arm of the man holding him up high on top of his head. The man opened his eyes and stared at him. He then moved his lips and made a smooth tonal noise. He then pulled himself up and dropped the scorpion in his mouth. He had the taste of sour milk and he swallowed him until he reached the inside of his belly. He then lied back down thinking of what to do next. The wind continued to blow on, howling and hissing, and the void of the desert remained a void, and the emptiness of the sky remained empty, and the only thing that could change was change itself, as the next living organism was about to enter the desert, drunkenly dancing about 
as he was unsure what to do next with himself. Oh, what he should do next. <laughs>